Hello, hello everyone. Today, we're not going to do, which I promised, I was going to do the uh, Serpino drawings. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to draw animals. And before we start, I want to show you these books, which I haven't done a video on any of these books. I did tell you about the books, but I'm going to show you page by page. Now, let me get some of a drink. I'm kind of like losing my voice again. Hold on. All right, the first book is uh, Drawing Animals 101, How to Draw with the Veteran's Eye. And it's by Mary Zuzuki. And it's a very good book. We're going to go, we're going to actually review it before we go on with the tutorial. And uh, like every book, like every how to draw book, it's pretty much the same. They'll show you what pencils to use. Uh, what I like about this book that it starts right away with the techniques and I'm gonna have to show you Vertically because uh, unfortunately my phone is not horizontal. So I'm gonna have to show you vertically So it's a very good book to get if you want to draw your dogs or your cats and It's got different uh, poses of each type of dog there is So we're going to review this a little faster. Here's the contents. And like always, the contents tells you the pages where you can find how to draw the eyes of a dog, the legs of a little dog, whatever, you know. The anatomy, comparing a person to an animal. So that's what's good about this book. It gives you the comparison of how a human and an animal is. So yeah. It's a little bit of everything here. The anatomy, the structure, the bones, where people and animals differ, the clavicle bone for the chest area, and the different balance of the animal, how they move. Here we have the human, the cat, the dog, the horse, Bring this down just a little bit closer. And the eye shapes from an animal to a human. So it's, it's giving you the idea that we're kind of a little bit similar to each other, animals and humans, except that it's just different, you know, shapes and different st structure of the face, uh, of the head, and the bone structure and all that. So, drawing dogs and cats, chapter two. And this is a great book if you want to do uh, portrait drawing. If you're into portrait drawing of your animals, if you want to draw your dogs or cats, I actually recommend you guys to get this book because it shows you all the tricks and trades, the formulas, how to do your animals, how to draw your animals. Here's developing the muscular mucks, muck up, incorrection, incorrect. Let's see what else we got here. The structure, the bone structure of a dog. people, the dogs, cats, 
cats. Pro pro yeah, proportioning dogs and cats. And the face structure. to animals and bodies so if you guys get this book of course you're gonna have, you're gonna do a lot of reading of course you're definitely gonna do a lot of reading so so you make sure that you read every single paragraph in this book to understand it just like the Loomis books you have to read all the books in order to understand it. So I'm going to go a little faster. Uh, so that way we could continue. I'm going to show you some tricks with plastic and a photograph, how to trace your, your dogs in order to figure out how things work. So I'm going to try to do uh, maybe two more tutorials, how to draw animals. Uh, but first thing first, I'm showing you the book. Uh, I'm going to show you the second book on the next video because where you want to continue, I want to be able to continue to do a step-by-step -step process for you guys. And then We'll just go on and on. Now, um, Sir Pino, you know, drawing the faces and the heads, that's probably going to be later on. I'm going to see if I can do more tutorials today. But everything has to do with time and a quiet atmosphere at the same time. I got to do everything a little bit quiet. You know, when it's, you know, a lot of, when, where there's peace, of course. Because I can't do a tutorial when there's a lot of noise, so... So what I like about this book is that it shows you step by step how to draw a tiger, a dog, anything, any type of animal there is. And it shows you pretty much the shapes. Now the other book shows you a little bit more, which maybe I'll show you that. Uh, let's see, I'll, I'll probably go on with the second book. Let's see what happens. also yeah all kinds of animals the tail okay let's go on with the next book this one is called uh, the artist guide to drawing animals how to draw cats and dogs and other favorite pets. So it's mainly about pets. Um, it might show some other domestic animals or wildlife. Yeah, I think it does. So it'll show you a little bit of everything here. And see, what I like about this book is that it gives you an idea that everything has to do with shapes, kind of like the Loomis method, you see. And uh, you do all kinds of forms of shapes, you see. 
So this one, this I think this is the best one I like. I mean, the other one is okay, but I like this one because it has to do with um, more techniques, shapes, circles. And that's something that you need to learn, especially, you know, drawing cars and houses. Everything has to do with shapes. <sighs> so we're going to go a little faster with this book also because... I just want to show you what the book is all about. You can see it's all about shapes, you see? Right here, step-by-step -step process. Drawing different breeds of dogs. You can see there's shapes right here, the shapes right here growing out any type of dog or any type of animal. And what I like about this book is the, it's so realistic. Like, I mean, the dogs look really cute. The drawings are really cute. So I think this is a Rottweiler, I think it is, or a pit bull, not really sure. And then we got cats. Chapter two is cats. How to draw cats. And you can see it's everything has to done, you know, do with shapes, grid lines for the features of the face, which is really cool. The three quarter view for a cat. And it's pretty neat the way this, the process is done. So this book, it actually shows you more, but it's up to you. I mean, you could actually get the, the first book I showed you or the second one that I'm showing you right now. That's really good. This is the nose, how to draw the nose. How to draw the ears. <laughs> And the body. <laughs> Kittens. You see the shapes. Step by step. The cat technique, how to draw the face cat. Uh, of course, this is a different type of cat. So I'm going to skip a couple of pages. Because um, I want to continue with the tutorial. So I'm going to show you the way I would probably do it. How to draw the horses. Cows. Goats. Okay, I can't show you everything because, you know, my battery is kind of low. So you got like two options. You can get this one, Drawing the Animals by J.C. Emberlin, or you can get this one, Mary Suzuki, Drawing Animals, How to Draw with a Veteran's Eye. So you got two books. My favorite one is this one. All right, so let's, let's continue. And we're going to actually, like always, um, everything has to do with techniques. And I'm going to use my Expo pen, and I got my plastic, and I'm going to trace. And I did a uh, live on Facebook. I tried to do my dog. It didn't come out that good, but anyway. Um, 
And what happened was that I was doing it in Spanish and uh, it was just very hard to do a tutorial in Spanish because I'm not very good. Uh, I just know how to defend myself in Spanish, but there's a lot of big words, especially if you want to, you know, teach people how to draw. So there's a lot of words. And I'm thinking of doing Spanish tutorials on only on Facebook, but on YouTube is just going to be in English better. So these are the pictures of my dogs. Um, and uh, what I do is, you know, I pick one. The I, I, I would guess I'd pick the best one I like. I don't know. And uh, like this is my favorite picture of my dog. Um, so what I did was, I'm going to show you right now. I started practicing. And you can do this also. And just like I've shown you that you can actually practice by tracing. So... I try to figure out how would I draw my dog's face. I can use circles. I can use a triangle shape. For the first thing I did on Facebook Live, I in Spanish, of course, I I did sort of like a triangle shape, like a big V shape, in order to get that head right there. See, and then after that, uh, I think I used a vertical line, right? And then I did like a big u-shape like this or I just can't remember I think it was just a, a circle like this and then another circle like a u-shape for the tongue so then the eyes of course when you look at a dog the you know the eyes are not like the same as a human that it's like three you know three eye length no it's like a little bit there's like a space between those three eye lengths so if you look at this, we'll do a circle here for this eye and then a circle for this eye. Then you're going to actually see another circle right here in the center. But notice there's like a space right between. See? So that's what I mean when it comes to drawing animals. You got to figure out that it's not the same as a human. Then in order to get the ear shape, I will probably do a shape like this and another shape like this. And then this will be the ears and I got to remember that this is the tail so I don't want to confuse this so yeah if you look at this and we'll put it on this side that's the formula that I would probably use to draw my dog and if you're drawing a whole body uh, you can actually use grid lines like for example here's the border the panel right this is the panel and you can use the four line rule that David Finch actually explains start the vertical first and do the line across this will actually give you composition in order to draw a portrait like this so after you know I would do the face of course then I would probably look at it study again and what do I see for the body probably a, an oval shape like this and then right here I could add, do lines if I want for the feet of course in on Facebook live I did a little bit different but there's always a chance that you know things change and then here would be the legs right here and and this would be the other leg right here okay now uh, if I want Again, remember, if you're going to do this technique, always remember you need a wet paper towel. Not so wet, just a little bit damp. That way you can erase. And remember, dry it. Dry it. That way your Expo pen won't smudge. So now I'm going to use the circle. So I look at his head. I study his head. Then I form a circle for his head. Then, of course, I'm going to use sort of like a Loomis method like this. Okay. Then I'm going to indicate if I want, I can use a triangle technique like this. This will be his eye over here, his other eye here, and then the nose right, right here. Okay. Then here, I'm going to do a U shape. Okay. I could do the same thing like I did with the other one. I could do a slanted line here, another slanted line here. That's going to be my ears, of course. 
and the other shape of the ear here. And then <clears throat> for the body, of course, I would do like a, <clears throat> I'm not gonna draw through this because then it's gonna look messy. So I'm gonna picture an oval shape, even though I can't do it around the face, but that's what it's gonna look like, an oval shape for the body. Now, I'll picture the feet first, if I want. Remember, last time I did the lines, but I could do it this way also. And here's his other foot. So I do another line here, and another line here to do his feet. And then, voila, I have the form of his body. And then his, right here would be his butt area. A little joint for that little feet there. And right here would be his tail. That's the, uh, my other dog, which was, um, the elderly dog. I forgot her name already. Angie. Yeah, Angie. Okay, so now we're going to look at this in a white piece of paper. And you can see the difference, you see? So practice, when you're doing the tracing, you take the plastic and put it on a white piece of paper and you study the shapes. Because, of course, yeah, this is going to help you out, but you need to put it on a white piece of paper. And let's get another piece, a whiter piece of paper. So that way you can study the shape and the formula, how to draw the dog, all right? Uh, or a face or whatever you're doing. Okay, so there's so many options of doing this, how to draw your dogs or your cats. So let's look at another picture. Let's do this one. This is one of my favorite dog. Sorry, my favorite um, pictures that I took of him. And like always, my dog used to break every toy I would buy. Every every toy that I would buy, he would just break break it into pieces and stuff. So. You can tell he ripped up the ear over here. He just finished his arm right here. And he was a disaster, my dog. But even though he was a disaster, I love him so much and I miss him. And unfortunately I can't have him because my brother won't let me have my dogs, any of my dogs with me. So so my dog, my, my brother is sort of like a two-face. He, uh, he lets the people he rents to have their dogs, but he won't let me have my, at least one dog to come and visit me or to spend some time with me. That's the way people are and that's the way family is. But anyway, let's just change the subject. It's bad enough that I miss my dogs. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do a circle for his face and then do the grid lines. And uh, I could do a line here for the, this, these eyes here. And then he's sort of like a, turning a little bit. So I got to remember that the nose is just going this way. So in a way, I would look at the triangle kind of like slanted a little bit. And then the mouth is around here and the tongue is coming out. And then I could do sort of like the Loomis method, like slice off here, because that, that would be where the ears would be. And of course, in this picture, his, he had a lot of hair. So. so on some of the pictures, he had less hair. And on some of the pictures, he had long hair. Because my ex-wife would spend so many times um, cutting his hair, made my dog look like a soldier or something. And I like my dog shaggy, like look more like a Viking kind of. So um, those are two different things between me and my ex-wife. I like seeing my dog look shaggy and she loved my dog looking more like crew cut. Okay, so of course this is the toy. And even with the toy you can trace and figure out how things work okay now let's get the white paper and we look at it and you can see the formula right there see
Uh, let's see if we can find another picture. Um, okay, let's do this one. This is Angie. She passed away. And uh, she was one of my favorite dogs. So I'm going to erase all these black lines here that I don't need. And we're going to try to figure out how her face works. <clears throat> so I could um, do something like this if I want. Like that would be her face. This would be her eyes. This would be her nose and her mouth. I could do that if I want. And then figure out that the nose, she's got a big nozzle for her nose there. And, and that would be her eyes right there. And then her ears are sort of like pointing out this way. So, and then the body is sort of like a, a bean shape like that, see? And I could do little cylinders for her legs to figure out how I'm going to draw her body. For example, I would do this process first, figure out like maybe two different ways how to do it. And then after that, do it on pencil or whatever, on a painting, whatever. Since I'm not into painting, I'll probably do penciling or inking, whatever. And let's try this. Always remember to dry it really good, or otherwise your pencil, your pen is going to smudge. The Esco pen. Am I saying that right? Expo pen, sorry. Okay, so now I'm going to figure out another way how to do this. I can do a circle. And then this will be the center of her face, just like the Loomis method. Then do another circle, like an oval shape for the bottom of her mouth. So I could do it that way also. The mouth will be here and then do a center line. And right here would be her nozzle, her nose. And then pointy parts of her ears right here. And then right here, I do the outline, sort of like a bean shape again. Okay. If I want, I could do a grid line to remind me that this is the center of her body here. Then I could do a hint of her foot here, a hint of her foot here. After that, a hint of her foot here. And she's got her little other feet right here. And then her leg comes out this way. And then I could do just the outline just to figure out how the shape of their arm is going to be at. So I could do, instead of doing cylinder shapes, I could just do an outline inserting out, you see, inserting out like that, inserting out like that. Just like I do with my figure drawings that I, you know, I do, here's the, the hip area. Then I do the legs like this, inserting out. So there's so many ways of tackling this. And then once I have these grid lines here, you can actually see the three quarter view that this eye is going to be closer and this eye is going to be far out. Okay. It's a, it's almost the same thing when you're drawing a, a face, except you got to remember that the shape of an animal or your dog or your cat is completely, totally different. All right. So let's get another picture here. All right, this is one of my little dogs, which is Koki. And Koki, uh, of course, I gotta figure out the shape of his face, which is sort of like a circle. Here's the center of his face. And then Koki, since he's got a lot of hair, I would probably do something like this. And then hit, right here is his ear, his other ear over here, and this and that. Then I'll do, if I want, I can do a line like this, or a line like this for the nose, or I can actually use a triangle. You know what I mean? Little by little, you, you, you're going to start seeing this. Just like when you're doing with the face, you're going to see shapes. 
and you're going to see grid lines. Your eye is going to be trained to see all this. And then I would probably follow, do the outline, sort of like a gesture form of his body. You see, like this, sort of like a hint. And once I do a hint of the gesture, like that, then I can go with more details, do half of the leg here, then do the, um, the tail, and then do it over here. But remember, when you're going to do this in pencil or in charcoal, whatever, you got to memorize everything that you just did before, before you, you know, put it on paper. And I think it's, I really recommend you guys to do this process first. Uh, whether you're doing people or faces or animals, practice by tracing first. Practice because it's going to help you, trust me. All right, so let's look another, let's see if we can find another picture here. Okay, this one is nice. I like this one. This is, again, Angie. And Angie always had, like, a sad face all the time. Very suspicious all the time. She was very, very suspicious. Like, what the hell am I doing with that camera? And then I'll do her face, you know, the shape of her shirt, you know, like, it's like the Loomis method, kind of. Vertical. And if I want, I can do a big triangle like this. Just to figure out, this here would be the nose, and right here would be the eyes. And then do the outline. Instead of doing shapes, I'll just do outlines for the rest of the face. So you could do it that way also, especially here and the bottom of her mouth right here. So it's whether you, you can use circles or shapes, triangles or whatever, but the, again, gesture and outline is very important too. So you see how if you, you look at her face, and let's get some white paper so you can see the difference here. You see? By using this formula, you'll be able to spot out and indicate where, how the face looks, whether it's on people or on animals, your dogs or your pets, whatever. Okay. So let's erase this. And let's dry this. Okay, so let's go on. All right, let's do this one. I think I did this one, but it was a, oh no, the other one was different, okay. It's similar to the other one I did before. Uh, this is Poopy. And Poopy had a habit of tearing his toy apart all the time, so. Now, I'm gonna do something different with this. It's, it, say, if I wanna do a real portrait, a real big portrait, you know, here's the panel, the outside border. I'm going to use a horizontal line and I could use grid lines just like uh, David Finch does. So I could vis you know, visualize pretty much the gesture form of the body of my dog like this. Okay. Like that. Even though if I do it in penciling and it's not correctly done, but the grid line is gonna help me view it. Like I'm looking at the picture of my dog right now and then I use this whole formula and I'll be able to detect the uh, form of my dog and the form of his little toy here, right here. Okay. So all I got to do, once I do the gesture form and the contour of his body, I'm going to visualize his eye here, his nose here. Very easy, very slowly, of course. Everything takes time. Then right here, he's got sort of like a circle shape for the muzzle part. If I want, I could do the circle and then do these lines afterwards. And then the eyes will be right here. And then the other eye will be right, um, right near where the toy is. See? then we can start, once you have the contour and everything, you can start doing more details, you work in the center. 
It's kind of like when you're actually tracing with ink, you're actually drawing, doing your drawing with uh, a bold pen, the outline, and after that you actually work with the details in the center with the ink. Well, the same thing when you're doing the penciling and when you're tracing at the same time when you're putting it on paper or on charcoal or any type of drawing that you're doing. So let's erase this. Now, again, we'll do the same thing. We could do something like this. In order to do this picture, here's the border, right? Okay. And then we could, uh, oops. It's top of the uh, cover, Let's see, fell down here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a line here for this object here, and then a line for my dog. Then I want, if I want, I could just do some indications of line like this and indication of my dog's head like this. See? And you're going to do this on a regular piece of paper. Okay? Because right now we're just practicing tracing right now. And then what are you going to do next? What you're going to do is you're going to start seeing, you know, you're going to contour. Or you can use shapes, whatever. You can contour first. And you're going to see, actually, this is like a potato head. You see? And here's an oval shape for part of the, the toy. And here's his ear. This ear is ripped up because he actually ripped up his ear. So, And then right here, he ripped up part of his arm. So this here would be a circle. Okay. So... Once I have the contour of my dog right here, I could visualize little by little the features. I could visualize this as a triangle shape, or I could use a center line just to figure out where my features are going to go with my dog. And the tongue is coming up. Okay. So now let's look at this on a regular piece of paper. And you see, that's the formula that I'm talking about. Now, let's erase this again. And uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna yeah, try this again, of course. So let's get another drawing, I mean, another photograph. So this is a big face what I, of my dog. So I'm gonna actually draw him this way. And I just want to make sure I erase all of this here. All right. Okay. Remember that I've shown you guys that when you're drawing faces, you can actually start out with just lines, right? Um, so that's the same thing I could do with my dog. I can use lines. This would be his eyes. This would be his nose. This was, would be his mouth. And then this will be the center of his face right here. See? And then I could visualize the contour of his nose. His eye would be here. His other eye would be here. And then, just like if you were doing a face. And I've shown you a lot of tutorials that you can draw a face just by doing lines. A vertical and a horizontal line. Well, you could do the same thing with a dog with your dog. And that's the same thing I'm doing with my dog, Poopy. So Poopy, um, this will actually capture more of his character. And then this line that I did here will be, even though I did the contour of his nose here, this is gonna be easier to do, which is the front of his nose. And his nostrils will be right here. And then his tongue is sort of like coming out because he's always, my dog is always, his tongue is always coming out. So I got to always memorize him that his tongue is always coming out. So let's look at this on a white piece of paper. See? So that's the thing that you could practice 
Now we're going to do his profile. Uh, we're going to do it two ways, okay? We're going to do a contour, and we're going to work with the center. Let's say, uh, let's uh, actually we're going to erase this right here. All right, we'll erase this, and we're going to practice. And we're going to trace his face first. But say you're going to do a photograph, like you're going to do a portrait. Remember, here's the border, right? This is going to be a border. And then you can actually do something like this. A big V-shape, because this is going to be the front of his face here. Once you have that shape, you'll be able to see the contour of his face. Like that. Then right here would be his eye. Then right here would be his nose. Then right here would be his mouth. You see? And let's look at this on a white piece of paper so you can see what I mean. Okay? Now, his eye would be a little popped out, kind of. Sort of like a, 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 a human's eye, except that it's a little bit rounder. Okay? his ears over here and then we'll do his nose and then we'll do his mouth right here and some hint of his hair now let's look at this on a white piece of paper you see where I'm getting at people by doing this formula this is going to help you improve on any drawing that you're doing you can do this also this plastic method in doing cars or houses or objects or lamps or whatever you guys want to do whatever you guys are into drawing whatever you can practice by using the plastic technique now i'm going to do the same process except that i'm going to work more with shapes this would be a circle this would be a cylinder shape Then I could work with the, the eyes over here, the nose, a circle for the nose, the mouth. Now let's look at this on a white piece of paper to see the difference. Okay, so now let's go back. And then right here, I could actually finish his eyes. This would be his hair. I could do the contour now. Before I did contour, but now I'm doing over lining. It's like I'm doing the contour over the uh, shapes now. That's what I'm doing right now. Now let's look at this on a white piece of paper. Now the reason why I'm doing this, going back and forth with a white piece of paper, so you can see it, the big difference from the photograph itself to behind the white paper, you'll see more details of what I did, you see? So that's why I'm doing it this way. So that way you guys can understand what I'm trying to do here. All right, so let's erase this here. So let's find another, let's go back. I got it looks like I'm gonna have to tape this up because it's breaking the, and this is an old album that I did for my dogs that I dedicated for my dogs. And let's pick a nice picture here. We already did this one. And uh, this was uh, Goski. Goski was killed by, uh, by a pit bull. He, there were, uh, this idiot guy, this Cuban guy, had like um, several pit bulls without chains in his backyard. And one day my ex-wife was walking um, Goski and Angie. And Goski's the one that actually got killed because he was so small. And uh, you, it's just hard to believe these two pit bulls jumped a five foot fence. So like the other pit bull followed the other pit bull. And it was amazing. They didn't attack my, you know, they didn't attack my wife. They just went after the dogs. And uh, that was when I actually found out, and believe it or not, that was like three weeks after I found out that I was um, HIV positive. That was 
the worst news I ever had. I actually freaked out that day. But anyway, that's a very long, long story. That's why I, you know, a lot of people like pit bulls, but to me, pit bulls are very dangerous. They can actually uh, kill, you know, innocent children and innocent little dogs. So uh, there are people that actually say pit bulls are not dangerous, but to me, they are. So I don't really consider them as good pets. But that's the way, you know, people have their own differences. So um, I'll never forget what happened to my dog. I freaked out. I couldn't even, I couldn't even go to work for like, well, I went to work, but at the same time, there were so many memories with my dog that I just like, I, I was just, you know, crying and crying and uh, I, I just couldn't concentrate. Um, and uh, to me, since I, I didn't have any kids, uh, you know, to me, that dog was like my own son. So, okay, so let's go back. Let's forget about what happened. And uh, let's see if I can do this picture right here. Uh, he was sleeping, I think, here. Yeah. So let's do this one. And yeah, sometimes we suffer when we lose our loved ones, you know. So this, this one, I'm going to actually use a, uh, a vertical line. And then here's a horizontal line for the eyes and horizontal, small little horizontal line for that little nose he has. And here's another horizontal line for his mouth. So if I want, uh, I can do this, this shape like that, see? And then I could do the contour. And his eyes would be right here and his other eye over here. And more hair over here. So as I'm doing the contour of my dog, I'm actually doing the hairs at the same time. So <clears throat> So let's look at this on a white piece of paper so we can understand how this works. You see? Clean this up, dry it, make sure we dry it good. And now we could uh, find another picture of my dog. I think I did this one already, did I? I can't remember now. No, I think I did, yeah, we did that one already. We'll find something else. All right, let's do this one, the body of my dog. And uh, we're gonna have to take the, this, yeah, this one out. We'll take out this one, and then we'll just put it back because it's gonna be hard. And that's what I should have done. I should have marked the ones. Let me mark the ones that I did already. So that way, I know which ones I've done already. This one. I'm not too sure about this one, but anyway, if I have to do it again, I'll do it again. Yeah, we did this one. So what I'll do is I'll just go back out and review the video, and then I'll just check the ones I did and the ones I didn't do. We'll, we'll just do on the on the next segment. All right, so. Like always, just like the body, just like the human figure, we actually see the contour. And then from that contour, we can do the shape, like an oval shape, like this. Sort of like a bean shape. 
and then another contour to form the head and then we'll do another circle to do his head and then right here we'll do sort of like a u-shape form or you can use a but I, if i were you i would just actually start learning instead of using cylinders start learning how to use contour because the contour is going to help you it's actually going to give more rhythm to your drawings especially when you're drawing figures so try to see in your mind train your eye to see contour and rhythm in your drawings you know that's what makes your drawings because if you keep using cylinder shapes and all that stuff I mean, it's good, it's, it's, it's great to figure things out with cylinders and shapes, but use a little bit of everything. Use rhythm, try to spot out where the rhythm is, the rhythm lines are, the flow, how it goes, how the body is, okay? Right here we have the nose. Now, I'm gonna actually take this plastic. Oh, I actually drew on this. I'm so stupid. I should have. Oh, let me see if it erases. I hope it erases. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It erases. Yeah, because I drew it on top of this. Oh, my God. I should have put the plastic on top. But it doesn't matter. I think it's the same material as this. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do another approach. We're going to actually... Um, look at the uh the panel again we look at the panel right and if i want to draw my dog again i can use um this technique this type of the contour which is actually the gesture line so remember when you're doing gesture lines, it doesn't mean that it has to be in the center of the body it could be in the form how the body is shaped you see and you can see another gesture line here. And you can see another gesture line here. And another gesture line here. And then a gesture line, sort of like an, a U shape there. And what do you see? A shape of your dog right there. And then you can work with more details. Start adding more details. Here's the tail. And here's the eye. And here's the ear. See, So everything has to do with rhythm gesture line just like the figure you know everything including animals and cats and you'll be able to see this more on cats because cats for some reason or something they have more gesture especially the way they move um, than dogs because there's something about cats that they move in so many ways that you'll be able to detect uh, so many gesture lines on your cat if you ever you know try to do you know draw your cat and stuff so so let's do this another way also we could do the gesture line like this again like this like this like this and then you can scribble by using this process this is a good way and just like you could scribble the figures you could actually do it with animals like that see i'm going to see if i can get a book by jack ham uh how to draw animals which i used to have but i lost it um that book was pretty good because it show you so many ways how you can draw animals especially in scribbling but you know what i could also um, check out on Google. I could Google uh, how to scribble drawing animals and oh, you'll be surprised. You can find all kinds of stuff. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll snap a picture of some of the process and then I'll share it so you guys can, you know, check it out. Because scribbling is a very good form of way uh, doing your, your figures and at the same time if you want to draw your dogs and cats. All right, so let's, let's put this back and... Uh, We're gonna pick out another picture here.
I'm not sure if we did this one, but I'm gonna do this one because it's such a nice picture of my dog. Poopy. I think I did this one, but we're gonna do a different approach. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do the four line rule, which is the grid line, which is great for composition, like always. Vertical line for the center. And I'll just use like maybe a couple of lines only. That, like, that's it, just maybe four block shapes. Just one line, that's it. Actually a vertical line and a horizontal line. That, I think that's enough for this type of picture right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out, I can use um, the contour. Before I did this one with a, yeah, I remember now, I did this one with a vertical line, horizontal line, but I'm doing this one differently now. So I, I could actually picture this like a contour, you see? Once I have that contour, I can indicate where the nose is right here, the eye is right here, and then the mouth right here. Now let's look at this on a white piece of paper so you can see the difference what I'm trying to show here. So what I'm gonna do is, once I have this, I'll be able to do the eye over here, the nose over here, and then the mouth over here. And then, then we have the ears over here, then that's it. And then we have Boopy. Okay. Let's color his eye. His black beady eyes. And then the mouth. That's actually the hair. And there you have my dog right there, see? So there's no boundaries, trust me, there's no rules. You can change the rules. Just by drawing um, and changing the method. So let's erase this. And let's put this picture away. Now what we're going to do is we're going to practice from one of the books and we're not going to use any plastic. We're just going to use regular white paper. Okay, so um, we're going to just practice some techniques from this book and we'll, we'll, we'll pick out something here that's easier to understand. Let's draw a cat. We're going to do this one right here. and. start with orange let's get different colors here so that way you can see the difference how I start okay so let's uh, analyze this first so as you can see it's a regular Loomis method circle and then here's the grid lines right here and you can see the dots for the eyes and then after that he does sort of like a triangle shape uh, for the nose and I would guess here from the nose here but I'm going to do this a little bit different because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the V shape first and then work my way up and that would be my eyes. So even though I'm going to do this process first, but I'm going to actually pay attention to the bottom of the nose first because that's what he should have done first. He should have done the V shape and then go up on another segment. But anyway, I'm going to help you figure this out. All right, so... I'm going to, actually, let me get my, um, hold on, because this thing here is not going to help me draw. Hold on. Let's see what time is it? Let me see because it's 12. Okay, good. 
Okay, so yeah, we're going to do start off with a circle. Just like the Loomis method, vertical line, horizontal line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to indicate where the eyes are going to be at the grid lines. Then the nose would probably be around here, but the V shape, I'm going to work with the V shape now. Now I'm going to do this a different color so you can see the process. And from that V shape, the edge of the V shape, I'm going to go up. And remember, I have the dot here for the eyes. From the corner of that V shape, I'm going to start drawing the shape of the cat's eye. Right? And it's very, if you look at this, it kind of reminds me of the Loomis method. Just for like I've been showing you guys lately. And then the mouth. It's a little low, like this, right underneath where the V shape is. Okay, so that would be the mouth. So when you draw, draw the cat's mouth, remember, something like this. All right. So let's look at this again. Now he adds the ears. So he's going to add the ears. So the ears will go right here. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do this correctly because it might be a, a different form of cat. But anyway, let's let's do pretty much what we see here. So that's my ears right there. I did. Then here's the inside of the ears. Now, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. We're going to start doing more details. And the cat's eyes are a little bit different from a human's eye. So notice that the eyes are going to go a little bit taper into where that nose line is. So what I'm going to do is, of course, that already has its shape. So I'm going to bring it in like this. You see? And then I'm going to finish the eyes which is, I got to pay attention to the shape of the eyes. This is going to be the shape of the eyes. And then the eyes are a little bit different. The uh, iris of the cat's eye is sort of like this, okay? Always remember that it's something like this. So you always got to remember. So let's do the shape of the forehead of his hair, where the hair is going to go. So as, as I do this method here, I'm going to do, and let's study the nose here. Notice that the nose, he forms it into a little tiny triangle. Before he did a V shape, but then he forms it like a triangle shape, like an upside down triangle shape. So that's what we're going to do. A triangle shape for the nose and then we're gonna start with doing the, the whiskers and now we could actually work with the the contour like add more details like more hair and contour of course for the shape of the heads you know the the shape of the head of the cat and then of course cats have a lot of hair in, inside the ear canal where actually inside where the ear is and they do have sometimes big ears so I want to make the eyes a little bit more with expression because cats sometimes when they look at you, they look at you with a very, very suspicious, you know, expression, you know. Just like, uh, believe it or not, the felines, the tigers. And then now, now I guess it doesn't have any more, but it's just giving you an idea how this is done. Another way of building a cat's head is like this also. 
So that's another way of doing. So let's do it that way. So we try the first step. This is another way of doing another cat's head. And then, so it's the same thing. It's like the, you know, the, the vertical and the horizontal line, except that the eyes are going to be more lower. So I gotta actually do the same process, but very carefully, the eyes are gonna be lower. So the nose <clears throat> would be, uh, let me see something here. Okay, right here, the V shape. And then of course, the, the muzzle of the mouth would be a little bit lower. So it would be around like this. So we're just gonna bring this up like that. And then after that, uh, this would be the shape of the eye. And then the other eye here. And then we start shaping the form of the nose. And then if you look at this, we'll look at this right here, you're gonna see the mouth is right between, a little lower from the center of the circle. So I did it right, I just gotta visualize how that mouth is going to look. Something like that, I guess. And then from where the corner of the eyes up here, I'm gonna go up like this, and then that would be the shape of my ears. So you got two options. You can do it. Um, you can do it this way, or you could do it actually this way right here. So you got like two options: how to draw your cat. Then I'm going to draw some contour. Um, cat's features and then the eyes are are like this and let's finish off let's add more details and what's really cool about this is that once you learn the technique you can create your own type of cat like say this cat has like a more like a darker eye here you know, you can make your own character cats. Like that. And this one, we'll just leave it white. You can make him a, a gothic cat too, and that, that'll be cool. and have this ear a little bit darker. Make more cast shadow, we'll make it like a spooky type of cat, you know, if you want. And I'm telling you, I could, I could, I could be really creative <laughs> with anything, I guess. And this is the first time I'm doing animals. I mean, I've done it before, but you know, my style but with the book, it makes it more easier, you know, because I think I messed up there for a second, hold on. With a book, you can actually create more and figure out where things are. So yeah, you can be really creative with this. I think I'm gonna do a tutorial, how to draw evil cats. Gothic cats. Um, I'm so into gothic stuff that it just never stops. <laughs> so yeah. And we don't want to make this look too like oval shape. We want to make it look like a real cat. So 
Let's erase some of these constructions, you know, construction lines that we don't need. Oh my God, these, my nasal passages, uh, it's just, my sinuses are just, and it's the air conditioning. And uh, it's like my ears are kind of clogged. And then at the same time, you know, it's like I, my voice is changing. So bear with me, guys, it's not easy. So we can do more details here if we want. So this side is going to be more spooky looking, like more darker, more cast shadow and more black areas. And this definitely going to be a gothic cat, like half gothic and a half angel cat on the other side of his face, which is really cool. Okay, so that didn't come out so bad. And we can make some dark areas here. I should finish this one. But actually, I'm going to leave it like that so you can see the process. Because I think I'm going to actually post this. So yeah, this is really cool, people. Um, so let's do something else. Let's do the... Uh, the uh, profile of the cat actually not the profile we're actually going to do the three-quarter view of the cat and if i can do a dog a technique here which i already did on my dogs but i don't mind doing it with these techniques so it's probably almost the same thing i would guess actually let's do a dog let's do a dog better hold on let's do a dog if we could find a dog here. <laughs> okay, let's do this one right here. Or we can do a smaller dog. Let's see if we can find a smaller dog. Let's do this one right here. All right, so I'm going to start with a different color. Now let me erase this over here and erase this. I don't need this. Okay. And uh, let's finish this a little bit here. Okay. What I'll do is I'll finish it later, make it, make it more better, I guess. Maybe maybe do a body or, I don't know, something different. And then I'll post it. That's what I'll do. But let's continue with the dog. So the dog is practically, you know, it's almost like the same thing. The Loomis method, the vertical line. And then we have the horizontal line. It's almost like the Loomis way. And then, of course, the eyes are going to go a little lower. Um, let's do the bottom part of the, f where the nozzle is going to go, where the nose is going to go. So the nose, um, is going to go right here and then the eyes and notice that he did some type of U shape in order to figure out how the eyes are going to be. So let's do that. He did a triangle. You can tell he did a triangle shape right here. And then after that, he did a U shape. So let's figure this out. We'll do a triangle shape, right? And then we'll do the U shape. Yeah. And that's where the eyes are going to be at for the dog. And then the nose will be around here. Okay. I think that's okay there. And then the ears, sort of like triangle shapes. So, yeah, let's um, fix the ears a bit. And then we could start adding life on this now. Make it look more like a dog now. So in order for me to do this, I want to shape the mouth first before I continue with the rest. 
right there. And then the eyes. There's the other eye here. Okay. Let me just bring this line down here to make that nose has to be a little bigger. Right there. And then of course, there's like a curve where the mouth is. And then we have, just like the cat's eye, they have sort of like, the eyes go in like that. That's right. Especially these type of dogs. And then we'll start by shaping the top of the ears. Now we'll just make it look more realistic, I guess. And then this side of the ear. And then right here. And then right here would be, we'll do some features. And, uh, Sometimes when you draw the eyes, be careful because I forgot that dogs are just like people eyes, that they have, you know, irises, but the irises are shaped differently. So, um, so let's make the iris. Make sure. we have the correct proportions of the eye, of course. And just like I did with the cat, I could make him like, um, what was the name of that dog from the Rascals? Was it Spot? Or Black Eyed? Or something like that? I forgot, from the Little Rascals, they had a dog with a dark, you know, dark, spot on his eye, on, on his left eye, I think it was. And then we could add more color on his face over here also. And, and you know something, man? I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't draw animals, and I think this came out pretty good. And I don't know why I kept pushing it over. You know, people were asking me, draw animals, do some videos on animals, and uh, I guess I can do almost anything if I really put my mind to it. But, you know, like I said, everything has to do with uh, the technique and the methods. That's what makes it more easier when you learn uh, different type of methods, tricks, and formulas, how to draw anything. And uh, I promised one guy I'm going to do something with cars, which I still got to get me some books on drawing cars. I'm going to go to Barnes & Noble's probably next week and get me some books on cars. Because I remember as a kid, I used to draw some awesome cars, but of course they were flat. But I need to draw cars like three-dimensional, you know what I mean? That's what really makes a drawing look good when you draw three-dimensional. And yeah, I think I'm going to see if I can find a book, how to draw cars, uh, if I go to Barnes & Noble's. So not bad, you know what I mean? It didn't come out that bad. And if I want to do more details, I can do more details. All right, so let's do um, something else here. We can do the profile of a dog, and we'll do it right here. Since I'm going to post this, I might as well have this one with animals. So we're going to start with a circle, right? And then a cylinder shape, 
and like I said you can do you know use the cylinder shapes but try to uh, train your eye to spot out spot out the uh, the contour of the face this would be the eye right here so if you notice let's look at the book again you can see that the horizontal line is a little higher so you can do this process first do this right here and after you do that then you start doing all these details and what's good about the book is that it shows you the muscles of the dog that way you won't get lost and let me put this away here Hold on. this is in a way it's in the way now I could actually start working with more details I'm gonna do the nose right here and then the mouth is going to be right near where the bottom of the cylinder is or where the contour of the bottom of the face uh, right here would be the eye and uh, I could do an oval shape for the ears but, then, but at the same time I'm shaping it like the ears see so I do an oval shape now it depends what type of dog you're doing if you want to do it like a Rottweiler or something like that the ears will be probably pointed up the German Shepherd would probably point be pointed also but this dog is a little bit different this dog the ears flat down a little bit kind of there um, and this is the first time I'm drawing dogs so bear with me it may not look like a dog but I would guess the profile is more harder to do. I think so. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's um Yeah, I think that came out pretty good. I just gotta add more details because right now, um I want to do so many tutorials with you guys. So let's do something different now. Let's see. Let's, we can do a smaller type of dog. And that would be more like a Chihuahua type of dog. And it shows you that the muzzle is a little smaller and it's closer to the face. So let's try to do a Chihuahua. Do a Chihuahua. I guess it would be something like that. And so, do this in. Yeah, the, of course, the um, the eyes are a little bit lower, and they got big eyes, of course. Because when you're talking about small dogs, everything changes especially the uh, features um, here's the teeth and the mouth and then we can draw the eyes right there So yeah, that didn't come out so bad. And here's a mouth opening right here for a dog. That's one thing you, if you're into drawing animals, you gotta learn how to draw their mouth opening. Just like if you were learning how to draw, you know, a human body, sorry, a human face opening their mouth. This is another way of drawing smaller dogs right here. Um, let's see if we can find something else we can do here let's do this one right here which is I think it's this one right here so let's 
get another page and we're actually gonna there may be several drawings here but do dogs which I might probably post and the ones I did on Facebook and right here now on YouTube so let's do this one and again it's like the Loomis method and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a big oval shape to get that mouth effect of the mouth so the eyes will be around here Now the only thing about this uh, technique, it's not showing you step-by-step -step process, but I could figure this out. I just could visualize another circle here. Yeah, there's another circle here for the bottom part of the mouth. And here's the mouth right here. Okay, I think I know what I'm gonna do. I think I know what I'm going to do, people. All right, so this would be the bottom part of the mouth right here, and the nose would be here. And yeah, this will be the mouth right here. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. And of course, right here where the circle is, they're sort of like, you know, triangle shapes. And it looks like two forms of triangle shapes. That's what it looks like. But after that, of course, you're going to shape it into a dog's ear. So let's start with that now. There you go. So. This would be the bottom of. I think I got it. Uh, let's draw his eyes. And the head is sort of like a blocky shape head. So it goes in a little bit. I think I have to pass that circle. Sort of like slice a little bit of the circle on top just to get the regular shape of his head. And this may look like cheekbones, but it's not. It's actually the shape of the hair on the dog. And I got to remember that it's got a lot of details, especially where the muzzle of the of his face is. And I, of course, I forgot to do his nose, which I'm going to do right now. So it's not bad. Um, it's. It's just this one is a little bit different. And the reason why I find this one a little bit harder to do is because, it, like I said, it's not like the other ones that it's like a step-by-step -step process. And this is just showing me one process and I just got to figure it out afterwards. You know, it's not the same like the other ones that I did before. Let me see. Now I'm gonna, you know, make him more darker, I guess. So for this one, I might post this, but at the same time, what I'm gonna do is, 
I'm going to uh, probably do the process. That way you guys could figure this one out. Because this one... I am, you know, it's pretty much like the other ones that I did, but this one is just one one formula that you have to figure it out, so. I just, I'm not too happy with the top of the head. Maybe because I probably exaggerated too much the, the top. So all I have to do is go back and fix that. Because it looks like it's sort of like really low. Okay, I think I got it now. And then there's some hair coming out like hair detail. Okay, I don't think that, yeah, that didn't come out so bad. I mean, I mean, for starters, because I am starting doing all this. Let's see if I can do this one. I'm gonna to try to do this one right here. Try a different color here. I'll do it right here. So I make sure you guys can see this. Okay, great. So I'm gonna do again the circle geometrical shape thing. And then what's next here? Let me see. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to do another circle down here. And then shape it. That would be the front of the nose. This will be the other eye here. And right here would, would be the, where the ears are going to be at. This is the other eye here. And right here would be the nose. So this part of the circle here that I did is actually where the mouth is going to be placed at. And there seems to be another shape of a circle here. So the ears are sort of like flapped down. And this guy's got big ears. So it's looking a little bit like this. Not that much, but like I said, you got to do this real slow. And I keep forgetting, I have to sharpen these pencils just to give it that good effect here. All right, so I'm going to do some details now. I could eyes.
and then the other ear here. And let's, let's color this in. Let's make the shape of the contour of this dog's face, of course. It's right there. So it's not bad. Um, I guess for beginners, because they're not very good drawing animals, it's not bad. I mean, I think I would actually give myself credit for at least doing my best. But deep inside, I'm saying to myself, I still need some type of practice. But it's that inner voice that we actually hear in ourselves that sometimes we're not doing something right. You know, our conscience actually speak to our minds. And it's not that we're crazy or hearing voices. It's our own conscience are actually speaking to ourselves, saying, oh my God, this is going to come out terrible. This is not going to come out. But if you keep thinking that it's going to come out terrible, then it might come out terrible. So, um, you have to have confidence in yourself when you're drawing. And that's something I learned in my life that, like in anything, anything that I do, including my job, if I don't have confidence in myself that I can't, if I, if, I don't, if I don't know how to do this, or if I don't do it, I'm never going to learn, you know, so... So it's always, you always have got to have that positive attitude. And remember, the mind is a, is a terrible thing to waste. You can, you'll be surprised what you can do with your mind. So you can create all kinds of things with your mind. Plots, all kinds of stuff, stories, or, you know, art. Um, it's always been like that. If you look at the old drawings of the old primitive people, like the like the carvings and the the designs they, they did in the walls, in the caves. That's how it all started, people. Because um, I would guess, like way, way back, people always was creative. And they did it also like how the Romans, they if you look at the Roman statues and you study the, you know, the statues, it meant something. And especially when, when, when you see it in the walls, in the churches, it tells a story. Um, and of course, back then, they knew what they were saying. But if we look at it, we, we have to analyze pretty much what those statues, what they're saying to us. Um, for example, um, if you look at the... Uh, like the carvings and the sculptures of the Romans in the walls, or, you know, you're going to see them doing gesture with their hands, um, including um, there are some emotional uh, artwork also. Uh, same thing with the Egyptians. Uh, they, they, they all tell a story, a story that you can actually analyze. And uh, yeah, people were always creative. I've always said to myself that, you know, the mind is very powerful. Um, okay, so I don't think that came out bad. It just needs a little bit of improvement, I would guess. Um, so let's look at something else. Let's do this one here. That seems pretty cool. This one is this one. Again, I wish they would they would have done more process to do this. I guess as an artist, if you're advanced, I guess you could figure it out yourself. So let me see if I can do this one. Um, I'm going to do it right here. And I'll do it just a little bit bigger. And uh, I'm actually going to do, to figure this out, just the contour you know, like the shape of the contour. So my nose would be down here. And then, of course, the eyes would be here. And then the ears. I think this is a... Not sure. Yeah, Greyhound. This is a Greyhound. And the eyes are further apart, of course.
Uh, let me see if we can do this right. The nose will be here. Um, part of the mouth will be here. And this will be the ears. So I don't know if this is going to come out exactly the same, but it's always good to do the challenge. I like the challenge. And since I love animals, this will be a great hobby to do. You know, drawing dogs and cats. I'm, I'm surprised that they don't have how to draw raccoons here in this book. Maybe it does. Maybe I, I just didn't look at it because I haven't seen this book in a long time, so maybe I'll just look at it slowly to see if I see, because I love raccoons. Those are my favorite animals. And speaking of raccoons, I actually made friends with a raccoon in my job. Like this was a long, long time ago. And uh, I would feed the raccoons and they got used to me. They were always looking for me, you know, because I had food all the time. And they were very patient about it too. They would actually come to the door and just stand up with their little paws. And they wanted to have some food in, them. you know, they wanted to eat, they were kind of hungry. And uh, one, I, it was like one of them were a female. And when the female had her, her babies, she actually trusts me with her babies. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's amazing. That's why you have to admire animals. Animals are very intelligent. And they got used to me, including the babies. They even wanted to play with me because I remember as babies, they were playing with each other, like, you know, actually jumping on each other and all that. At first I got afraid because I thought they were going to bite me, but what they were trying to do was they were trying to nibble a little bit on my hand because they knew that I was friendly. And uh, I had videos. I'm actually in my um, on Facebook, I made a, a video dedicated to my dogs, but I actually posted videos how I used to feed them hot dogs. Um, I had them on YouTube, but I was so stupid, I deleted those videos. Um, but I have them on Facebook, though. I, I actually posted it on Facebook, how I used to feed these raccoons. They would actually come down the tree, and uh, little by little, I would feed them hot dogs, you know, or some type of food. Um, there were, like, two of them that I noticed that they loved bananas. And uh, one of them... Well, all of them, they loved hot dogs, bananas, including chicken with rice. So I would feed them almost a little bit of every type of food there was. So let's look at the, um, the drawing here. Mm, I think what I did wrong is that the eyes are shaped a little bit different. I'm not really sure. I think, yeah, the eyes were sort of like, yeah, a little bit like a sad looking eyes because dogs for some reason or something they got like sad looking eyes, um, like the shape of their uh, the, the the shape of their eye. You can tell it's very like I don't know like sad looking. And the cat's eye, it's really spooky looking. Like they're really smart, like kind of like very fiendish looking eyes. Cats. So yeah, it's a big difference when it comes to dogs' eyes and. Uh, cat eyes. Yeah, now it looks a little better, I think. There you go. All right, guys, that'll be it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, I'm going to try to do some faces again and heads by Sir Pino and some other great techniques that I've been experimenting with the Loomis method, which you guys are probably gonna enjoy. 
So hopefully you guys are look out for these books. Um, there you can find them probably on eBay. And if you guys have a Barnes and Nobles near where you guys live at, you can probably find these books because these are brand new books that I've I never seen before. So I think I'm not really sure. They might be on eBay also, and you can probably find, trust me, you can find used books on eBay or on Amazon. Drawing Animals by J.C. Emberlin and Drawing Animals by Mary Suzuki. So look out for these books because they're really good. All right, guys, good luck with your artwork. And I'm going to see if I can post my latest drawings on my dogs. I mean, half of them came out pretty good, I guess. I'll probably go back and fix it a little bit more and then post it and then maybe draw some more stuff here or just do some more details or something and probably post it. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. All right, guys, thank you for watching and good luck with your artwork. Never give up. Keep practicing.